Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening in and around Missoula. I got a lot of videos, and I mean a lot of videos I have for you guys today. So this is more of a video J kind of show, but I have Mary Dalton here. She's from the Missoula Agent Services, and she's here to talk about Residence Rights Month, which is happening next month, and I'll have her on the show as soon as I'm done with this morning introduction wrap-up. So kicking things off with uh, is a little bit of your weather, uh, 47 degrees. It's going to be that winter advisory warning that's kicking off and uh, of course many of you have a, have have seen this particular photo floating around from the Missoulian Facebook and all that stuff Shazam the kid when you hear uh, Missoula's winners uh, about to happen a little bit too early you have this face so of course this is uh, uh, from um, Tom Bauer from the Missoulian who took this photo and uh, part of it is uh, uh, the winter storm warning stretches from the Canadian border through Sealy Lake, Missoula, and the Rocky Mountains uh, front down to Butte. Um, and there's some even reports that they're pushing a little bit fr further east of Montana, east central, no, west central Montana, sorry, just a little bit easter than the western part of Montana. Are you confused? Well, well, you can lie. <laughs> Blizzard-like conditions in the greater western parts of Montana are bound to happen around this time of year. Of course, a couple years back, 2008 was a prime example of uh, the, another uh, cold snap, but we're expected to see about 1.5 inches of snow that would break the record for September, which was set in 19. 34. And okay, let's skip to some big news items. Uh, one of the biggest things that are happening in the nation and, um, and of course pop culture for some reason is the Greta Thunberg, uh, a name that has become synonymous with uh, climate change and climate action. Of course, in the wake of climate rally last Friday, Greta Thunberg went to Congress to call in activity as the biggest cause for climate uh, change. Uh, since then, uh, she went to the UN Climate Summit to uh, basically uh, chastise uh, uh, f uh, world leaders that they're not doing enough. Um, she it was quoted in saying, our biosphere is being sacrificed so that the rich people in the countries like mine uh, can live in luxury. Um, the 16-year-old girl, girl from Sweden went to talk about the solution, has always been there, but politics got in the way far too often. Of course, many people have posted and responded, and even Donald Trump is talking about her, saying that she seems like a very happy young girl looking forward to a bright and wonderful future. So nice to see. Trump wrote on Twitter, um, apparently uh, ignoring exactly what she was even saying. Trump and many others have questioned climate change and thus sparked the same tired debate that have many questioning uh, Greta Thunberg and uh, not what she's trying to say. So it's a very complicated issue about climate change, and it's been made complicated through politics. And uh, that's something that everyone needs to f figure out on their own. And I suggest you look this up, look at some information, both sides, regardless of what you believe in. And it's a really important thing to do this as well. But the, one of the biggest things that are happening also in this week is... Uh, the impeachment process is put into effect um, as uh, Nancy Pelosi put into a file to impeach President Trump for uh, having ties with the Ukrainian leaders for asking them to interfere with the 2020 re-election bid. Of course, so far, the whistleblower who blew the lid on this has not been named, and Republicans are looking to name them for purposes of talking with them in Congress. Of course, that's kind of what's happening in the news today. You can look all this up, NPR, uh, CNN, um, the Missoulian, all those wonderful resources that I l quickly went into, but there's a brief overview. But I'm not going to keep Mary Dalton waiting any longer. Here is some um, new art clips um, that are happening, and they'll be wrapping up this week as well. So you guys get a chance until about October 3rd at the Gallery of the Visual Arts at the University of Montana to check this new art installation by some of the uh, um, BFA students at uh, the University of Montana. So without further ado, here's this. And when I come back, I'll have Mary Dalton on from Missoula Aging Services. when it plays. Hold on a second. I guess it doesn't want to play with... I guess it does not... Okay, here we go.
Hi guys, we're back here with Mary Dalton. She's with Missoula Asian Service. She's an ombudsman. I completely butchered that, obviously. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk a little bit about Residence Rights Month. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what the importance of residents and their rights. Yeah, well, thanks for having me today. So I work at Missoula Aging Services, and the Ombudsman Program is one of many programs at Missoula Aging Services. And we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for, those, for them. So with the Ombudsman Program, I am an advocate for people who live in long-term care. Um, October is Resident Rights Month. So it's a time to sort of focus on and bring, bring attention to the rights of residents who live in long-term care in Missoula County. Um, this year's theme is Stand for Quality. So we want to talk a little bit about Stand for Quality. What does that mean? Uh, quality of care, quality of life, quality of services, um, overall quality of the experience of the services and the care that people in long-term care are receiving. And what are some of the misconceptions of long-term care? Some of the misconceptions, I think, um, so in Missoula County, we have uh, four skilled nursing facilities and we have approximately 15 assisted livings. Some of those are typically older adults, what you might stereotypically consider older adults. Um, there are a lot of younger people in long-term care, um, maybe people with a physical or mental disability and they need that type of um, supportive services and long-term care. Um, so we talk about the cornerstone of the Ombudsman program is resident rights. And Try, trying to focus on the individual and what that individual might, what might be important for that individual. What, what would be their preferences, their choices, including them in decisions that are being made. Um, so when we talk about Resident Rights Month, we want to really honor the individual and their preferences and um, focus on quality of care and what's important for the individual rather than what's important for the for the system. Right, and you uh, and you act as an advocate for a lot of the residents as well, trying to connect them to the right pieces. That, that's exactly right. I've, I visit on a regular basis. We have another half-time ombudsman in our office, and we visit all of the facilities. Uh, we might go in just as a routine visit to build relationships with people, or we might go in on a complaint visit. We, we get complaints from um, People at the nursing home will call us, the staff will call us, the residents will call us, family will call us, friends, um, other organizations that we partner mm -hmm. with might call. Um, what, what is the most common complaint that you hear? You know, they, they range across the board. Some, you know, we do talk a lot about food complaints because food is such an essential part of all of our lives. And, you know, it's, it's built into our history, it's built into our culture, it's how we celebrate. It's just such a, a fabric of our everyday being that I, I work a lot with food council meetings and trying to, trying to get people um, the nutrition and the food preferences that right. they like. So that, that's a, a big one. Um, although it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal for when we talk about quality of care, food is very important. And, you know, if you think about yourself in everyday right. life, I mean, what, what are some of the, the foods that you enjoy and how would you feel if you weren't able to get some yeah. of those foods? That actually is a great example because I have a, um, a new uh, roommate who doesn't have a car. And that's just like one of the things that, you know, as you're Asian as well, is that you, you, you don't necessarily have access to cars because a lot of times you're not fit to drive a car when you get to a certain age. Mm -hmm. But he's a younger guy, mm -hmm. so he has the ability to maybe jump on a bike and just ride to the nearest grocery store and stuff like that. You know, a couple times I want to help him out here and there, but he's technically on his own. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, this is kind of how it is for a lot of people. You can make, you live in the same facility as somebody else, but you just don't understand exactly what their needs are. Exactly. So yeah. um, I think it just like travel in general, just being able to get from one mm. place to another is a big deal, especially for residents since, um, you know, some people are homebound, some people have to have certain access to certain things because you're saying that like the youngest, um, you know, like the younger populations who are also, you know, stuck inside. Yeah. Uh, like mm -hmm. the whole stuck inside thing is, it's, it's relative, but a lot of times they don't have the same opportunities to be able to go out and be out. Right, yeah, and a lot of people that I see that are living in long-term care, their meals are prepared for them by the facility staff, and oftentimes the menu is determined by the facility, 
facility staff or maybe a bigger corporation of the facility, um, oftentimes there's a dietitian involved because they have to meet certain standards of you know daily requirements and that kinds of thing. But um, you know, what if the food that you know your favorite meal was served in front of you and it wasn't prepared correctly? Right. Or maybe it was too done, or it wasn't, or it wasn't how you would like it. It didn't have the spiciness that you would like. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, that really takes away from quality of life when you can't get just some of those little small preferences that are big things for people yeah. and things that people look forward to all day long. Yeah. So uh, if you're uh, homebound and you're always looking for help or maybe just like want to get in contact with you, where can people go? So you can uh, call us at Missoula Aging Services. Our number is 728 seven six eight two or you can visit us on the web at missoulaagingservices.org yep. and i would be more than happy to visit with people about resident rights we do confidential consultations and, and just encourage you to get out and visit with people that you might know that are in long-term care and provide some of that socialization and interaction with the folks that are living in long-term care is there anything else you wanted to say? Because you said you wanted to uh, try something a little different today as well. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I just wanted to do a little interactive um, action with you yeah. and talk to you about hypothetically, if you were in, say, a long-term care facility, say something happened and you needed some extra care, what, you know, just thinking about sort of your activities of like you know we all have habits of a lifetime right. you know some of us get up in the morning we have our coffee right away others don't like to eat till 10 o'clock or you know we have all these different habits that make our lives work so what would be a quality of life for you if you had to be in long-term care what would quality of life mean for you i think uh you know like one of the biggest things is i live on a in a two-story place so getting to my room on the second floor is a task in, in, in itself you know, like I'm young, I, I can handle it now, but like you said, I was like, I don't know what I would do. Like if mm -hmm. I, if, if for any reason, maybe I hurt my back, hurt a leg, just like a, a, a simple minor thing. Exactly. Like even if I hurt yeah. my arm, Temporary. like you can't grab the railing when you're going up the stairs yeah. and you could still hurt yourself from further, further damage. Right. And so, and so if you were in a situation where you were laid up and needed help, I mean, what kinds of, what kinds of activities would you enjoy that would entertain you? in a way that was meaningful to you? What kinds of activities? I guess uh, video games. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a lot of people are really getting into those kind of video games. You know, like it's getting more interactive with, you know, virtual reality and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Even like 360 video, people are really liking that kind of stuff. Right. Being able to see a 360 environment without leaving their house. Right. And, and for me, that wouldn't even cross my radar. It's like a video game would be the last thing I ever thought right. about. So when you think about being in long-term care and being, having to have other people care for you and help you with these quality of life things, what if, what if there was no one there to help you get a video game and there you would be without something that would be important to you? So having an advocate or having family or being able to communicate that with the staff and having them honor those wishes would be something that right. would be very important because even like you know like you're homebound and you're being um, entertained from your house and it doesn't give you the same opportunities to be able to be go out and mm -hmm. you like a lot of times like you know like youth is wasted on the young all that stuff it's like for me it's even like I always think to myself should I be going out and doing some things a lot of times I'm very homebound mm -hmm. I usually just by choice I usually mm -hmm. like to be at home a lot of times yeah. so it's like one of those things is like when you have the inability to be able to go out and do things then you really regret missing out I think that's right, a that good choice lesson. Is, that choice is taken away from you at that point because now you you have the ability to choose you can come or go but if you if that choice is taken away from you that takes away a lot of your of your power and your options to choose yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think, you know, one thing I think that we, we can all do for people in long-term care is just to reach out and to visit and to engage in those conversations with people that are in long-term care, asking them what quality of life means to them and just empowering them to let them know that they do have rights and they have a right to voice their, their um, choices and have those honored for them in a way that's meaningful for them. Yeah. So as you're, as you're celebrating October Resident Rights Month, it's something to keep in mind. Yeah.
Well, thank you, Mary. Yeah, thank you so much. I think that's a good note to end on right there. I really appreciate you stopping by. You know, Missoula Agent Service comes on my show every month. They talk about many things that Missoula Agent Services does to the aging population. Um, the people, um, dignity, independence, and health of um, aging adults and those who care for them. Yes, yeah. exactly. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we'll be right back right after this. General Howard, Major Clay Wood, and three Easterners who were financiers who had never been West, had never seen an Indian, didn't know anything about Indians, except what they read in the dime novels. The commission, when it came together, it was already a foregone conclusion that they were going to rule in favor of the government that they could take the land. To Major Clay Wood's credit, he refused to sign the findings and he submitted his, his own paper to be placed in the records of his opposition to what the commission found. Some things that people can do if you happen to know a family that has gone through a suicide, don't be afraid to approach them. And sometimes we get that feeling, the survivors, that people are afraid to come up to you. They don't know what to say. Um, but what you can do is you can offer them, um, you know, how can I support you? What can I do to help you through this? Uh, don't uh, be careful that you aren't judgmental in what you say. Expect tears. I never cried before. And boy, for a long period of there, people just have to look at me differently and, and the tears would flow and, and stuff. And that's just all part of it. Now some of y'all might blush. What is butt glue used for? <laughs> Keeping your swimsuit Keeping in place. Keeping your in place. <laughs> How about what national magazine publications did Michaela Brewer, America's Super Teen, grace the cover of while wearing her national crown? No. No. That's close. Super. Supermodels Unlimited is your answer. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for a little pre-critic. Some movies are coming out this weekend that you may want to skip because, um, hey, all movies are pretty much the same if you really think about it. All Yeti then, it's time to start things with a yet another E.T.-esque movie where the government has to track down this alien or some businessman has to track down this uh, creature who has some kind of thing that they want the MacGuffin power and be like, hey, you know, you got what I want. You're rare, but you also have what I want. I want it. Give it to me now. I deserve it because money, blah, blah, blah. And then the girl who is the, uh, the kid who uh, um, stumbles upon the creature, which tends to happen, then soon becomes uh, a boy and their dog, you know, that kind of situation. But the dog is something different or sometimes the, uh, the boy or, or something is for it. But anyways, the, the story is all the same. Uh, they're on a journey to phone home. And the only way they can do it is through the power of love. So enjoy this kid's movie called Abominable. Uh, up next, we got a biopic movie. So it's one of those movies that glamorizes some of the old uh, faded stars from back in the day. Old Hollywood. 
great, perfect contender for a Hollywood Oscar film because, hey, you know, it's it's like you basically might as well be making Oscar the movie. Um, so this movie is, star is basically about Judy Garland. And back in the uh, back from the grave in the spiral picked about her time in London before she died. Um, spoiler. Um, she was at 47. Um, enjoy a Rocket Man slash Bohemian Rhapsody esque film that will show you uh, her abuses with alcohol and drugs as she's putting on these sold out performances in London. In the Times, uh, Renee Zellweger stars as the Judy Garland character. Um, so, anyways. I guess there's going to probably be some kind of reference to Wizard of Oz, and she's just like, oh, I'm tired of hearing that reference. Blah, blah, blah. I'm more than just the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, you know, the, the, it's it's what you think it's probably going to be. And that's what your movie you're going to get with, the movie called Judy. Finally, um, I have no idea, but sometimes i got to scrape uh, the bottom of the barrel to see what kind of other movies that are coming out. You might not even actually see this in some of your local theaters, but The Day Shall Come. Um, and you usually do three films in pre-critic here. Comes a critically acclaimed film that you probably haven't heard of. This one is about F FBI secretly bankrolling a man who wants to start a revolution and then uses it against him. I'm not an expert, but basically this sounds like that Johnny Depp movie Black Mass where they bankroll a criminal, a known criminal, um, into basically getting rid of all the other criminals. So, so I guess uh, number one, to solve crime, don't bankroll it. Number two, uh, not trapping anyone into it. Number three, and I'm sure there's plenty of money put aside to stopping crime, right? Anyways, watch another movie about uh, Black Mass, uh, which gives criminals even more power to get rid of the other crime that they themselves created. Those are your movies for your pre-critic. I have another movie for you guys. This is a Lego movie, some stop animation movie uh, that I'm reluctant to say that I made. So without further ado, here's this. And then when I come back, I'm going to be talking about all sorts of city council stuff. So city council talked about a lot of stuff today. So I have a lot of quotes and a lot of clips. So stay with me. Uh, come on now. It's no big deal. It's not that far. Oh, geez. Are you okay? Uh, come on. Let's go. Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? Hey, I'm over here. <laughs> For some of you who don't know me, I'm your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Check this out. Whoa! Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Uh, so, uh, you guys like Spider-Man or whatever? Oh man, uh, geez, I really like... Uh, sorry, who are you again? Must be from a universe that has never heard of Spider-Man before. Hmm, weird. Who are you talking to? Can't you see he's talking to himself? Or should I say, myself? <laughs> oh, no way, man. <laughs> I'm not going to let you get away with being the other Spider-Man. Whoa. Oh, man, where'd you go? I'm up here. What? But who are you if you're not me? No, I'm you, dude. Well, this is really weird. Yeah, I agree. Maybe we should fight to see who's the best. Oh, uh, come on, R2. Just watch this mess happen. Hiya! Oh, you missed! No, I didn't! You missed! No, I missed! <laughs> Whoa! <hit. laughs> yeah! Oh, man, what is this all about? Oh, come on! This is a once-in-a-lifetime fight! Uh, I've already lived once already. Well, I guess there's no point in us fighting anyways. Yeah, there's no point in us fighting. Oh, well, I guess I'll see you later. Zoom! Alright, see you later, dude. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for your city council report. Um, kicking things off is your city council meeting that happened on Monday, uh, September 23rd. Um, this is basically the big ticket item, which is the rezoning of the 57.5 acres of the, off the Mullen Road uh, to also make the Mary Jane Boulevard Road a throughway for people to have access from Mullen to Broadway. Um, but of course, you know, Mullen also goes to Broadway all the way down, but this is just another throughway rather than people using Flynn Lane, which is used for a lot of kids crossing the street to get to Hellgate Elementary. Um, this item is basically, uh, this is a public hearing. There's a lot of people who live in the neighborhood are very concerned about um, how construction is being built, and they're afraid that there's going to be a lot more high-density housing, more rental stuff rather than um, housing ownership. So 
they're just a lot of people are worried about it. I have a couple quotes from them, but we're going to talk a little bit about the main areas that people are concerned about, which can uh, which consists of traffic issues, Flynn Lane traffic, commercial use, and uh, park space. Uh, there's not many actual park spaces in the uh, general area. Um, October seventh will be uh, the make it or break it date. Um, so uh, the whole idea is to figure out exactly where they're going to move forward with development. Um, Jeremy Keene, interim director of development services, kicks off the uh, the topic with this. Funding it, and it defines that um, that we will go through a subdivision process. So, um, I, I think from our perspective, that gives us a lot of good tools to work with and, and assurances on how this is going to go forward. And so, what what we're recommending is, as you consider this request and rezoning and and amending the growth policy, that we also work towards getting this development agreement in place concurrently so that um, so we can address those other concerns at the same time. That's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Keene. All right. So that was kind of like a, a brief, short introduction of exactly what's happening here. One of the things as part of this is uh, to effectively keep a leash on development so they don't get carried away with higher buildings, large rental complexes. A lot of times developers, they come in and they develop and then they just leave and then they sell whatever they properly have. It is also a high risk deal because when it comes to developing, so far developers have been working on a project for about over a year now to try to get things moving, uh, working even with some TEDs. Uh, so um, one of the things is that, uh, 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 let's see, so the law defines uh, what defines transportation and developers in these areas and also give the city of Missoula tools of <laughs> design standards. Oh, that was a weird sound. Sorry about that. <laughs> Nick Kaufman, WGM building manager. He talked a little bit about during the committee meeting that last Wednesday and I showed a couple clips from him. Um, he also keeps talking, um, he, he talks about keeping the neighborhood affordable without getting too commercial in this particular, in these particular areas. So here's Nick Kaufman. When, when we do residential development uh, to, do, to provide affordability in housing, like 44 ranch estates, 44 ranch estates does not have an R zone in Title 20. And the reason it doesn't have an R zone in Title 20 is because the setbacks in all of your R zones, right, exceed what we need, right, to do traditional neighborhood design, right, and good planning like, like Opticos's design. I could stand here and defend Opticos's design, but there are names on it, so I know it's good design, right? But in order to get that good design and reduce the price while providing livability, we need to reduce setbacks. So now I have to go to a B, and as soon as I go to a B, someone says the word commercial, and I think Jenny said it five times because I was counting during the presentation. I don't want any commercial uses in there. I'd like to have some neighborhood business uses in there. I used to own a convenience store gas station and it was important to the neighborhood, not just for the petroleum products, but to be able to come in and buy groceries and actually meet their neighbors. Remember Tool Avenue Grocery? Remember that was our last one, the last one that went away in Missoula. So we've got this B2-1 and we had a meeting April 10th at Hellgate Elementary to talk about the eight and a half acres. We had a meeting on August 21st and August 28th, and we reduced the density down to 21 dwelling units per acre, but then after the meeting on the 28th, we reduced it down again to 15 dwelling units per acre over most of the site. We've held meetings and we've listened. That doesn't usually happen. I don't know if we've gotten close enough. There's people in the audience who will be able to talk about that. The good news about not coming back to you until October 7th is we could have another one or two neighborhood meetings, right, to inform people on what we're doing and about the development agreement and to listen once or twice more to see if we can't get closer to something that works for the neighborhood and works for our developers. All right. So um, many of the things that are happening um, is that the city is uh, trying to figure out what works with also combating the uh, the need for housing in Missoula, but also keeping it affordable. So. Uh, Let's see, where am I at right now with my notes? Okay, so the city of Missoula has attempted to get developers to build Miller Dream Boulevard out of Monroe. Uh, one example is Costco uh, last year, was one of the ones that ended up backing out because of similar issues with growth policy changes and the city getting involved here 
as an example of one row that has the same problem. So Nick Hoffman talks more about the Mary Jane Boulevard and some of the issues that happened um, even before Mary Jane Boulevard with another street. I robbed this out of the 2018 bill grant instead of the 2019 bill grant. The streets in black are streets that are constructed, and you can see that England Boulevard west of Reserve Street, right in the middle of that graphic, has been constructed. How was it constructed? Was it constructed with bill grant funds? No. Was it constructed by the developer? Yeah, it sure was. And then Mary Jane Boulevard, through Pleasant View, is constructed. Was it constructed with a bill grant? No. Was it constructed by the city? No. Was it constructed by the developer? Yes, it was constructed by the developer. So when you do development, you get to construct the roads. If the city wants to participate with impact fees or other contributions, they can. And in this case, perhaps a build grant will help us. All right, so that was one of the suggestions by Nick Kaufman to consider that if the city wants that road, they should put down some money to put down this. So, so far, Nick concerns not only with that the city makes developers build this throughway, but also creates commercial unfinished work and small f uh, with small fire lanes. Um, Nick Kaufman hopes to get more neighborhood feedback before uh, 7th of October. And of course, uh, now we're gonna we, now we're gonna show some of the public comments. Most of the meeting was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of public comments and a lot of people who are against uh, the development in as well so katie uh kathy snodgrass resident thinks that we shouldn't rush into this and she doesn't believe that the development is there yet for developing this 57 acres of course it's the responsibility of a developer to make a profit it's, it's also the responsibility of city council to assure the city develops in a way that can provide a good quality of life for missoulians rather than blindly pursuing maximum dwelling units at any cost. Growth without providing for quality of life will make Missoula a nondescript anywhere USA, and I don't believe any of you want to do that. Uh, that was uh, Kathy Snodgrass talking about that. I have another person who, uh, 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 this is um, Jim uh, Galant, and um, he talks more about high density and traffic uh, while also wants to help improve uh, the connectivity, you know, of fire lanes of some of these residents as well. And I've seen urban development. I've seen what it's like to live in cities all over the world. And I got to tell all of you people in that, you know, semicircle up there with facing me, Missoula is probably the nicest place in the world, or at least in the top 10. And I've met people in other continents that have heard of Missoula, but they haven't heard of Montana. So as a, an, an alum from University of Illinois with me, you know, Red Grange once said, success isn't a happy ending. It's just the beginning of a whole new set of problems. All right. So that uh, was a, uh, that uh, kind of sums up uh, most of the public comment that happened during uh, the public hearing of this development. This development would be yet another drop in the pan for the amount of folks moving into Missoula, which does require more housing. But a lot of times the residents of the particular area, England Boulevard, off Flynn Lane, is looking to uh, it, not necessarily uh, create um, high density housing, but try to create uh, more of the same neighborhood that has already been developed on their property as well, while at the same time o opening up connectivity, reducing traffic, because some of the people during the public comment portion quoted in saying that they see over 500 cars pass through England Boulevard daily. So the full presentation is available. Um, if you are interested in finding out more, you can go to the City uh, Council uh, through the City of Missoula's website for more information about this meeting and more. Uh, this, is, this has been an, a constant ongoing process for uh, the city of Missoula and I'm um, going to kind of leave it right there. Uh, so next up, we got Parks and Conservation and the kickoff committee meetings with uh, y'all, but as we deep dive deeper into the world of parks in this ever-growing city of Missoula, one of the biggest things that they want to worry about is connectivity. So here is a Director of Parks and Recreation, Donna Gockler, talking a little bit about this. Uh, we needed to bring this to you today uh, because of the timing of the fifth Mondays and holidays and all those things. And what we're trying to do is forward these pro uh, this plan, the ordinance, and the projects so that we can start getting work done on the ground and acquiring lands and um, showing citizens that their uh, approval of an open space bond is going to result in the things they expected. And part of this is uh, many years ago, the city of Missoula decided to um, 
uh, have a, a bond that the citizens of Missoula County voted on to purchase um, open bond lands, um, parks and conservation uh, work throughout the county, and this is, post this is uh, part of a joint meeting between the county commissioners and the city of Missoula council members. Um, um, for those of you who don't already know, um, the open space bond pit passed many years ago to help acquire lands for the public trails and recreational use. Um, Basically, imagine um, many national parks that are run through the city of Missoula. So a lot of times they want to work on ways to have low maintenance. Um, basically, the main, the main money that goes into a lot of these open space areas is uh, weed removal, um, invasive species removal as well, but at the same time establishing trails. So a lot of times the land can be uh, enjoyed by all and unspoiled. So the Parks Department make trails to put up signs. Um, not much else in terms of maintenance, uh, but of course plenty of um, um, uh, non-native uh, plant removals. So Donna Gockler says that this is more than just an update, but also a rewrite about the uh, basically the parks and uh, the open space um, master plan. The plan's open space vision is to conserve, protect, and connect and I want to dive a bit deeper into that. So conserving natural systems through purchase and stewardship of land, conservation easements, and other available tools for the benefit of future generations. Protect community open space values, including important natural, cultural, and recreational resources. And just a reminder that a lot of our historic and cultural resources are on these open space lands. And connect urban green spaces and anchor areas through corridors so that our community is literally connected to these systems. In All right, so one of the biggest things that happened uh, during the Fort uh, Missoula Regional Park um, that passed um, back in 2014, um, 38 million, it's a $42 million bond, and the $38 million went to the Fort Missoula Regional Park, while about um, $1 million went to uh, the replacement and update of many of the playgrounds throughout the city of Missoula, 11 parks, and then, of course, the rest of the money all went to improving trails, um, working on some of the things. Of course, the city on a side project work on that overpass bridge over uh, Reserve Street to basically connect all of the Missoula trails to Hamilton, Montana through that Tiger Grant federal funded th deal. So a lot of things are kind of happening and what they want to, uh, one of the major things that Donna Glockler wants to do is improve the trails and encourage people to be able to get on their bikes and just travel around the city of Missoula as well. Um, Donna Glockler? Uh, talks about this updates long process um, uh, towards um, working towards future projects. The open space ordinance uh, was written, uh, I think, back in the 80s, and it was first created for the 1980 open space bond. It was then updated for the 1995, and then it looks like we missed updating it for the 2006, and we're back here for the 2018 open space bond. We um, took the word acquisition off because uh, what the open space ordinance does or MMC 1256 is it really addresses uh, most specifically two, two things. Um, the city's intent with open space in general and second it describes the role of the open space advisory committee and their role specific to um, passage of conservation bonds which are specifically open space bonds um, for the intent of preservation, conservation, protection of open space. And one of the major things that the uh, city of Missoula wants to do are uh, parks, uh, particularly uh, based on um, um, feedback from the community, is they, they are more interested in maintaining a lot of new parks rather than op uh, purchasing new open space. So part of this open space now that's kind of evolved and changed is that they want to concentrate on preserving and updating trails and doing all that kind of stuff while uh, spending less time purchasing more open space. So it's also important to note it's a, been a bit of part of Missoula for quite some time now and has been updated and been passed time and time again to continue this process of open space. There's been many opportunities for uh, this uh, open space bond to discontinue um, and it's been continuing on ever since. So that's kind of uh, the deal that's happening within the uh, city of Missoula's parks and open space bond. Um, Let's move on to our next meeting. Yes, there is another meeting. Uh, we're going to be talking a bit about um, 
one of the big things that are happening, which is the emergency shelter, uh, and they're trying to figure out how to uh, figure out extreme weather condition shelters for people who are homeless, who don't have a warm place to be overnight, and a lot of this is trying to figure out um, how to make this a more a permanent ordinance for emergency weather conditions, because a lot of times, um, they don't know exactly because weather changes here in Missoula so often and they're just trying to fi figure out a, uh, a main stay to figure out a way for people to find um, weather condition type stuff since the Pavarela Center capped last year at 175 which left about a couple like about over a hundred people uh, without shelter so this is a continuation of these talks Jen Grass Development of Services talks a little bit about this in more um, in better words than me. <laughs> Lacks uh, adequate services to address the increased need of our homeless and at-risk populations in our shelter system during extreme weather. This results in unsafe overcrowding in our permanent shelter system. It also results in people remaining outdoors in encampments or in other places not meant for human habitation during extreme weather jeopardizing their safety and well-being. All right, so that was kind of a, a brief uh, statement. Um, one of the things that uh, you have to, uh, the, one of the things that I, I, I do want to make a point on is that uh, a lot of this has to do with a safe place for people, but also a healthy place for people. And by healthy place, you want to be able to find a place for people that uh, are not too much, um, are up to code. Capacity is a big deal too, because if, a, if any building, even uh, at a local uh, shop for uh, food, a restaurant or anything like that, um, you, you cannot exceed capacity regardless. So that's against the building code and fire code. Um, and so they need to figure out ways to work with the fire department and figuring out ways to um, make it easier for people to stay in these kind of facilities while also still being having an, enough elbow room in case of emergencies. October 21st will be the big public hearing. And if passed, could go into effect by as early as November 1st, just in time for the 2019-2020 um, winter season, winter season last year. Uh, the winter season, uh, last they got funded uh, through the Salvation Army into March of the, of this year, 2019. And, and it was a big part of keeping people warm and keeping people safe because a lot of times one of the, the major uh, uh, things that are happening with uh, Project Homeless Connect is that they uh, really nailed on the head in terms of how much it costs to uh, ho um, work with some folks who are dealing with hypothermia, um, trying to hel help people who are um, freezing um, during the winter months and basically uh, the hospital costs uh, are usually go back into um, someone has to pay for a lot of their hospital costs if they people are found so a lot of times it's better to be proactive with keeping people warm and safe rather than have it being reacted reactive because um, a lot of times costs for per person for uh, leaving them outside can be upwards to forty thousand dollars per person all right so Lavelle means uh, talks with Stacey Anderson about concerns of uh, violating building and fire codes. So this is an, uh, one of the major things about the emergency warming shelter. Uh, there's, they're trying to go with some of the work with some of the details and trying to figure this out. So this is uh, them kind of going back and forth, uh, trying to explain some of the things that how is this uh, actually going to work out. We're all concerned over making sure spaces are safe and meet fire code and meet building code and any other local regulations. We have at the front end of our zoning code statements that say that as well. You know, you have to meet all other local codes. What this is doing is cross-referencing that and saying you have to. So it will be on a case-by-case -case basis, but fire and, and building would be looped in um, to be able to evaluate spaces and make sure that it's safe. So, may I follow up? So, to clarify, if a, a, a religious a church for more, uh, wanted to come and be available to use as a shelter, then they would need, and even though they had not been built necessarily to house people overnight, they could come and get a waiver or like a case use or whatever the permit that they would need to qualify for this would, they would go through a review process with the fire marshal to make sure that it was a safe to sleep people there. Right. They would work with the fire, the, the um, building, and with the housing department to um, make sure they are compliant and are creating safe situations. All right. So I hope that answers your questions. Um, there's a lot going on with the city of Missoula. And uh, one of the things that, we, um, that they are trying to do is that... Uh, 
of course, uh, since uh, according to the uh, 2018 Montana Point in Time survey, uh, about 300 homeless individuals were uh, found here in Missoula. Um, of course, uh, between the 2010 and 2014, had see, uh, saw, saw the widest range of homeless folks, with as little to 180 homeless folks in Missoula to as much as 285 people um, in Missoula in 2014. The, of course, there's still plenty of meetings happening Wednesdays that extend all day, uh, but I just wanted to give you a taste of uh, some of your city council community meetings as well. Again, if you want more information about what's happening within the city of Missoula, you can go onto their website to watch those videos and more. You go to ci.missoula.mt.us. You go under your government, and under city council, you click on agendas, webcasts, minutes, and it brings you to this wonderful web page and it kind of shows you dates so if, if, if you see the video link down below it you can click on it and it'll show you the video pages that I'm showing you during my city council report so you have administration and finance committee land use and planning committee public works committee and a lot of times what I always like to try to do is I click on the meetings and a lot of times that they're talking about rezoning there's not much that I can talk about but if there's something really major happening and many major changes on here I just want to make sure that um, I want to talk a little bit about it, just kind of give you an overview about how Missoula is growing and o overly changing for the better, question mark? I don't know. It's up to you. I'm going to keep it as vague as possible, and I'm just going to use the information that is provided to the city council meetings to interpret um, as I see. All right, anyways, <laughs> that's your city council report, and I have a fun video for you guys. I'm going to throw it over to some of the kids. Uh, some of those boys from the Dude I Just Drew. These are highlights from Dude I Just Drew, um, Season 2, Episode 2. And without further ado, here's that. Hey everybody, welcome back to Season 2 of Dude I Just Drew, where we're going to do some digital drawing with Mario Paint. Hello. Oh. You thought I was gone after our last challenge, but I'm back after destroying you with our Sharpie challenge last time. I'm here to destroy you at a new challenge. Mario Paint, a program from 1992 that was originally played on the Super Nintendo, which will now be played on my laptop with a 2001 Apple computer mouse. One, Mario. One wrist, one broken wrist. Yahoo! Um, so rules, same as always. Uh, five rounds, five minutes, that's how we're doing it? Alright. I've got a couple ideas. That Gob is Yoda. Uh, that looks like Jeez. a green goblin. You look like a snake. Pushing against a wall. Yeah. It could be that. I don't know. Holding up a wall. Holding up a wall. Carrying the entire series. Oh. No! Oh! Uh, there you go. Undo dog. Undo dog. Woof. Doggo. Doggyo. It's Yodoshi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a little bit of a JoJo's pose here. <laughs> Stretch, I stretch like this right before an exercise, just like Yoda. Thank you. Yo, you ready for this? Yeah, dude. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> Anatomy of a cartoon character. <laughs> then you can kind of just draw a bean around the neck. For <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why, maybe but like you a... kind of look like you're just going to like walk up to my house and start eating out of the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I just point at it and say beans. Beans! Beans! Dude, is his coat robotic? I don't know. Because he's a robot? Because this is a quicker sketch. <laughs> Beans! <laughs> Beans! I think since it's detectoid, you should pick something techy. 
and Astro Boy. All I can read is Tennis Olympics. Um, okay, so Vegetable Tennis Olympics? It's Killer Carrot! I like the Olympic ring. <laughs> That's not enough rings. <laughs> not enough rings. Major hype. They're all of his peeps. And the homies. These are all his folks. These are all these are his girls. girls. These are all his dudes. These are all his girls. Put that, put that. Uh, I think I'll use whatever the snow thing is here. And it's gone forever. Oh, oh no. Bye, Major. Oh. Human head, but the teeth oh, this are eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're telling me about that one. Human head, but the teeth are eyes. Yeah, I forgot about that immediately after, because that's nightmare. <laughs> oh. <laughs> welcome, welcome to it part three. Oh. As far as I can tell, this is done. <laughs> as far as far as I can tell. But you can keep it. adding, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, I don't like it. No. <laughs> that certainly is a drawing. That is a drawing. That's an SCP if I ever I've seen. I cannot wait till that's a shirt. Yeah, you can try that one. Uh oh. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That was the perfect one! High five! Dude! That, dude, no! We did not that, know! Oh my god. I totally forgot about oh that god. one. That was... Oh... We painted with Mario. It was I, fun. A little bit of Yoshi in there. It was fun. It was very, very um, interesting. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna disappear back into the void and I'll come back I next guess season I with guess, another challenge, I guess. I guess. Outro. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for watching. Remember, you can find us on YouTube, you can find me on Instagram, nowhere.arts, you can find me on Twitter with nowhere exclamation mark. Go to Spreadshirt, pay, wait, no, pay, not Patreon, Spreadshirt. <laughs> Other things, our website. Um, yeah. But, uh, see, see ya. See ya, see ya later, guys. Uh, bye. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about your events that are happening this weekend. There's a lot going on, so I'm going to try to get through this as fast as possible. They're doing a development and preschool screen clinic at Desmet School. This is a good way for your kids to get op uh, an opportunity between the ages of 0 and 5 to get appointments for the child screening and receive more information. Uh, you can call them at 549-4994. You know, eye check, you know, um, blood pressure, just like the just like a basic physical um, for a lot of your kids from Desmet School. And they're going to be doing it as uh, from now until about noon today. Um, they usually do this a couple times, so you might want to double check to see when they're doing this again. So that's 549-4994. You know, like a hearing test, a color blindness test, and all, all that just kind of overall view just to kind of see how uh, they're doing um, in development. Tiny Tales and Storytime is a great way for kids again, to uh, learn reading and uh, word games and all sorts of things uh, through the uh, Mizzou Public Library. They do it every, pr most days, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at the Mizzou Public Library, but also they do it on a Sunday, Saturday, all sorts of days. You can't miss it. Uh, Hands-on science, earth and space. Uh, no uh, fire or wind, but earth and space is good enough for spectrum discovery as they join them on their 8122 Avenue Street. They explore uh, the universe with the earth and space experiments at the Discovery Bench Wednesday through Saturday, and their maker space is Strawbies. Cribbage and Bridge, uh, Missouri Senior Center, the best dance floor on the map, um, is a great way for play, to play some other folks at some Cribbage and Bridge. Nerf on Turf, Missouri Center Sports Arena, you get to shoot uh, Nerf guns at each other. Need to say more. Um, Family Friendly Friday at Top Hat from uh, n uh, 6 to 9 p.m. It's a great way for your families to get together. Parents can drink and their uh, kids can just run around and be crazy. Uh, UM Opera Theater, <laughs> gala concert and silent auction. Uh, this is the Downtown Nats Collective is doing an opera gala at their Downtown Nats Collective. Uh, it's uh, across the street from the... Um, um, the main, it's, uh, it's off Main Street and it's across from the parking garage. So you, you can't miss it. It's uh, La Petite... Uh, it's, um, the flesh building, basically. Um, so yeah, it's fifteen dollars for general admissions, ten dollars for students, and you can get tickets at the door. Dare to Laugh with Broad Comedy MCT is hosting Broad Comedy. Uh, Dare to Laugh with the Broad Comedy is an all-female comedy troupe touring the state to benefit the ACLU of 
Montana, and they've been here since 2001. The Broads, nothing is sacred except an unflinching look at America today. It's outrageous. It's community. It's a part a party on the stage. Um, Saturday, you have all your markets. Um, it's going to be cold, just so you guys know. We got that winter uh, thing, uh, about an inch of snow happening, so uh, you got all your Saturday markets. Uh, a lot of people, through the cold, the winter, and all that stuff, people go and do uh, some of the markets. You can check that out around 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. every Saturday uh, until late October. So National Public Lands Day at Mount Dean Stone, Missoula Fresh uh, Market South. The parking lot, they're doing the National Public Lands Day. Um, so, you know, join us for a day of trail building and a fun at the Mill Creek side of Mount Dean Stone as they celebrate National Park Lands Day. And this morning, you put on your gloves and help us put the finishing touches on the new All Abilities Trail along the Miller Creek. Uh, at noon, join us for the picnic lunch and hear the latest Mount Dean Story project updates. You can call Val Five Valley Lands Trust at 549-0755 to coordinate alternative transportation. Again, that number is 549-0755. Get on your work gloves and help with some All Abilities Trails. Missoula Clean Energy Expo at Carriage Park. While you're going to the farmer's market, you're going to be wondering what's going on at Karis Park. It's, a, it's the uh, Energy Expo. So if you're looking to improve your uh, overall clean energy and uh, you saw um, um, Greta Thur Thurman's and you're inspired to do more about uh, saving the environment, you guys can go down there and join Climate Smart Missoula and the Missoula Re uh, Renewable Energy Association for the second annual Missoula Clean Energy Expo. And it's from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Karis Park here in downtown Missoula. Missoula Ran uh, Moon Run of Homestead, they give tours to people from 11 to 5 p.m. Uh, photography, painting, picnics, and play. Explore the history of the homestead at your own pace or receive a tour from one of the caretakers or volunteers. All at the Moon Run of Homestead. Arbor Arboretum um, tour, fall colors. Um, originally, they wanted to do a nice uh, tour of the fall leaves around um, the University of Montana. I don't know. They might be able to do it, but a lot of times uh, we kind of got uh, gypped on the fall season a couple years ago when we had heavy rains just before all the leaves, just as the leaves were all turning color, and basically the rain just kind of shoved it all off off the trees, so we basically were having an early winter without the snow. So, but again, this is a tour that started at 11 a.m. at the University of Montana. They'll in the route just north of Main Hall and the west of University Center starting at 11 a.m. There will be plenty of time for questions. And why not let your kids stay indoors at MCAT? Saturday drop-ins are every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Your kids and their siblings can join us to do some stop animation, some live action movie making. It's a great media drop-in for kids who just want to express themselves through a television medium. All right, so that is about that. Um, I don't have much else to say except for goodbye, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I had a lot of videos I wanted to show you, but things kind of run a little tight around here, uh, especially if, uh, for a one-week show. So without further ado, uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Skyrim. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Mm -hmm.